Welcome to the Acrylic Asylum, I'm Mike Ferris, and in this video I'll be showing you this very simple black and white piece. So don't forget to check out the description box below for a list of colors and materials, and stay tuned to the end so you don't miss any lesson details. So getting started now, I have an 8x10 hardboard canvas, and I did print out this image on my printer with an 8x11.5 I'm sorry, eight and a half by 11 standard printer paper here. So this is just a proportionately layout where I want my darks and lights at. So with painter's tape, I got it taped on and with wax transfer paper, you can see one side is waxy and the other is just plain and dull. So I'll put the wax side facing down on the canvas and this is gonna show where I want my lines with my stylus that I have here. And so I'm just gonna trace out where I want the lights and darks to generally be based on this image here. Okay, so you can see my lines here. This is pretty much where I wanna be. So now I have titanium white, permanent black, and raw umber here. So I'm gonna take some dark value of black in this brown. And so with this, I'm gonna start with some dark values. And like I said, generally where these go, and I'm going to adjust these and put some lights over darks and vice versa, but this is just to block in some color for now. Okay, now without cleaning, just taking some titanium white and I'm gonna add a little bit more of this raw umber into it. This just warms it up a little bit so it's not just plain black and white. So now I'm just gonna take and this will be my light value that goes generally in this area right here. So I'm just gonna cover that up, add a little bit more brown into that mixture. And I will go lighter on top of this, but for now I just wanna get this base coat for now. Okay, with the hair dryer now on medium heat, just gonna give it a quick dry before I start applying more colors and coats and adjusting colors. Okay, now I'm gonna get some more titanium white into that mixture there. And this is gonna be an even lighter value now. So on top of this darker gray that I just put down, I wanna take now and go over that and so this little bit of a darker view, ah, darker hue underneath will show through just a little bit through this lighter value here. So that's kind of what I wanted and it just gives it more interest and makes it a little bit more fuller looking. So I'm just gonna drag that down now. And again, we're just blocking in color. So now I'm just taking my dark values of black and brown. And I wanna go back in here and I wanna reinforce this dark area. Okay, so with the color left on my brush now, I wanna take and wipe most of it off. And I just want a little bit of it on because now what I wanna do is take the corner of this number 18 flat that I've been using here, and just like so, I wanna dab in and make sort of this little foliage indication. So just the edge of it like this. And I just kinda of tap, sort of like so. And you can do this however. This is just gonna be sort of this foliage reflection that's in the water and this is gonna add more interest and give it that shine to it with that reflection. So any way you wanna do these, this is just, again, just tapping motion and using the corner of the brush. Okay, with that color left on my brush now, I'm gonna take the edge of my brush and let's come down here and I'm gonna start my first reflections, or actually ripples, I should say. And these are water ripples that are happening from the flowers that we'll put in. And I'm just gonna go in here in random places and I'll do darker and heavier and lighter values and I will mix it up. And again, that motto here and there, but not everywhere. And this will bring out a very realistic looking water drops and all the different ripple effects.
Okay, now I'm getting my number four flat brush and taking some brown and black now. And with the corner of it, I'm just gonna put in these little broken lines here and there and some little hashes, just kind of something like this. And this is gonna add more interest and just show more disturbance within the water movement. Okay, now taking my number two flat brush, as you can see, it's a lot smaller and taking those dark values now and going into even smaller places now with that. Okay, so just gonna take this up and I didn't really wanna draw anything out ahead of time because I thought if I don't like something or a line goes out of place, yeah, I can just take this uh, other color, like the light stuff and knock back the black or cover it over or vice versa. So I encourage you when you're doing this, just go for it, be loose with it and don't worry about your lines and your circles being perfect. You want some of these lines to be broken and jagged like that, it shows realistic water disturbance. And also, like I said, you can just cover up a line if you don't like it with a value that is opposite of that or whatever. So just go for it. And the more relaxed you are, you'll find that the more success you have the first time around and your circles will look like more round like they should. So now I'm just gonna take this value up and just put in a couple of these more faded ones. Now this value, as you can see, is a little bit lighter getting out here. And so that just adds more realism so just mixing it up. So now I'm just going to take this lighter value here now, some titanium white. And right down here in the corner, I'm just going to add a little bit more of this lighter value. Okay, some more of that light value now. And with the corner of the brush, I'm just gonna dance that in here and there. And right here on this side, it's gonna be a little bit different of water movement. There's gonna be kind of more of this moving water on this side right here in this area. So I'm gonna play this light and black value back and forth. And this is gonna be what creates all the different, um, different effects and all the different holes within the water and all the different ways that it's going to be moving. So as you can see, I'm just dabbing it like so. So just kind of here and there, however you want to do it. And like I said, if you don't like something or something is too much of something else, take that other color and just go back over it until you have as much of whatever it is you want showing. Okay, so now taking that black and that brown, and as you can see, I'm going back over this light, and just here and there, just gonna knock some of it back and create some of this water disturbance details. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna add some more of that dark in here and show some more of this ripple effect.
Okay, so just taking the rest of that color that's left on the brush, and as you can see, with just very little pressure, and even with my finger, I can just put it down and fade it back, and it won't be as dark or as vibrant. So, as you can see, these different shades and lighter pressure, and then really dark, heavy black, it just really mixes it up and brings out that realistic looking water ripple effect now. So, now taking that lighter value with some titanium white, a little bit more on my brush now, and let's go back in here and I would just want to create some more of this water detail effect. Okay, with my number two flat brush now in this small area, I want to take some light value and let's create a ripple right here. Now I want to take some of this dark value now and I want to go back in and knock some of that light back and also define some of that. Okay, with the same number two flat now and just those dark values again, I want to go in and make these very solid, very dark shadows here and there. And this really helps contrast and pop these water ripples just a little bit more. Okay, now I have on my palette some cad yellow and some cad orange, and now I'm going to use my number eight round brush here, and this is going to help to make some of the centers of these flowers, so I'm going to take some yellow now with just a little touch of orange into that, and some titanium white because that makes it opaque and brings it up, and it's not so transparent because yellow is a very transparent color. So now with this number eight round brush now, I want to take and 
just use the tip and kind of do something like so and make the center of these flowers here. Okay, with the dryer on medium heat again, and this is so that I can put another coat of that yellow down so it's not so transparent. So now I'm gonna take some of this raw umber to that yellow, this darkens it down, and just kind of right here, I wanna make sort of this shadow, and it gives it that dimension and sort of lift on it. Okay, so without cleaning now, I'm just gonna take some yellow now. And the cool thing again, too much of that dark color, I just come back over that with that yellow and settle that back. And I can do anything I want with these colors, make more or less of them and blend them wherever I wanna do that. So now I'm just gonna take some titanium white here on the very tip of this number two flat brush again. And just here and there, dab some of these direct highlights on top right here. Okay, from a number eight now down to a number four round brush now. This is gonna be for the flower petals. I'm just gonna take pure titanium white and pull it through to a point like so. And as I do it, I'm gonna use very little pressure and then more pressure as I come out here like so. And in this way, I can make very easy flower petals just like this. Okay, so after that, now I'm taking some light value now with just a hint of those dark values, mostly titanium white and very little paint on the brush with my number two flat. I'm gonna come around these white petals that I just did. And this is gonna be sort of like a reflection of the flower in this dark shadow area right here.
Okay, with my number two flat again and permanent black, I'm gonna go around this flower now. And this is gonna be a nice shadow that shows in the water here, and it's gonna really make this flower pop against that. Okay, and now I wanna go inside here on this part of the water and let's put some permanent black here and there and let's really make this pop and bring out some more details. Okay, so that's it and I did not sign because I was gonna put a poem on it for a good friend of mine, but I actually ended up changing the picture on the poem that I did. So I did sign it in my heart and that's what matters. And so if you guys have any questions or comments, let me hear those and drop those down below. And until next time, happy painting, everyone.